I realized in the other two die recordings that I used a class file and we have not done chapter three yet. So if you want to do uh, the die program, I've created another project. If you want to do it in one file only and you don't want to create a class, then you can take out the uh, die line where you create the die object. You can just set up a random number generator and then the only other thing that changes is here you'll have n equals gen for the generator dot next int 6 plus 1 and then everything else is pretty much the same so you take out a line of code uh, at the top and then you modify this line of code in the for loop so I also had a lot of questions about the random walk project the idea being we're just going to write a loop not all that different from the die simulation except we're only going to get back two numbers 0 and 1 and we're going to let 0 stand for moving one unit to the left we're going to let 1 stand for moving one unit to the right and we're going to visualize the person on a number line at position 0 if they move to the right they're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4 if they move to the left they're moving minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and so we're just simulating randomly are they going to move right, are they going to move left and where are they going to end up so really I think conceptually that's harder to grasp from the write up than it, it's really not that involved of a program so of course I'm going to do my Java random import from the util package or library and I'm going to do this all in one file and I'm going to set up my random object and I am going to declare my variables in this case outside of the for loop um, location I definitely need outside of the for loop and inside because I printed out not only within the for loop but I print out their opening or beginning location and then after the loop is done I print their final ending location so that definitely must be declared outside of the loop um, I prefer to do the random number outside of the loop although you might be able to get away with doing that inside the loop because we're not going to reference the random number anywhere but the loop um, and the direction you could probably declare that inside the loop if you wanted to as well as the string which way. I tend to declare them outside of the loop but you could also do some of them inside. So now I'm going to basically print out the beginning location which we said we are going to start them at zero in the middle of the number line. Here's my loop where I'm going to loop a hundred times. Now because I know in chapter seven I'm going to be working with arrays I'm going to be using for loops a lot and array index numbers always start counting with zero. I'm in the habit of starting with zero for my loop counter which means if I want to loop a hundred times since zero is a valid counting number I'm really going from zero to less than equal to 99 that's a hundred loops or I can go less than a hundred either way I'm getting a hundred loops if you prefer to do it the, the more logical way starting at one you can go from one to 100 this way. So whether I do 1 to less than or equal to 100 or whether I do 0 to less than 100 or less than or equal to 99, either way, three ways to do a for loop to get 100 iterations. So here I'm determining my direction by generating a random number between 0 and 1. Remember if I put a 2 in here I'm going to get back 0 and 1 only and I just have an if else. If I get a zero back I'm saying that that means move one unit to the left so I subtract one from their location and I say that I moved left so I have a little string to hold the word left. If they didn't move left the only option is right. They must have get, I must have gotten back a one because those are the only two numbers that will come back so otherwise they moved one unit to the right so I am keeping track of their position on the number line in this location variable. Direction is a number that tells me right or left and I translate it into the string here. And so then I'm going to come down in the loop and every time I'm going to print the person moved one unit to the right or left depending on what which way holds to position and then I'm just going to print out the location. 
then when they're done I print out their final location so you can see in the outputs quite a bit of output they start at zero they moved one to the right they moved a whole bunch to the left came back to the right more to the left a few times to the right and you can see that they're going to end up at position negative 12 to the far left and of course each time you run it you should get different results um, so this was just an exercise to help you practice using a random number other than a six-sided die in a for loop also to help you do an if-else statement where we're taking a number and translating it to a direction and we're moving the person along this number line and we also talked again about declaring inside the loop versus outside. Um, and I'll let you kind of think about that and let me know if you have any questions.